All right, so the project I want to show you is this one, Stealing Secrets from Keeper on Android. And this one had some particular difficulties that took me a while to update this project, but it should be working now. So um, you need a phone, you need a um, rooted phone, a rooted Android emulator. So I'm just going to make a new one. It's easier to make, it's easy to make a new one. I go to Create Device, and then I choose something like Pixel 3 XL, one that doesn't have the Play Store, and then Next. And uh, I want a 64-bit ARM version. All, the only thing I can get on this machine, which is a Mac M1, is ARM 64. Make sure if you're using Windows, you get 64 uh, Intel, you get a 64-bit Intel, not 32. That's all that matters. And then I usually increase the uh, available storage, uh, or whatever this year, RAM, for this to 4096. Although I don't know if anything's really necessary for this project. Anyway, making it a little bigger just seems good. And so I finish, and that should be making my new Pixel 3 XL. And I can tell by the size it's this one. This is the one I just created. So it's a brand new phone. So I start it up. And it doesn't have the Play Store. You can see here it has Google APIs, but it doesn't have Google Play. So it should be rooted. So if I open a terminal on my machine and clear, all right, I should be able, uh, okay, there it is, it's up. So I do ADB shell, and I get a shell on the phone, and I do SU, and I get a root shell on the phone. So this is what I wanted. The phone is rooted. So I'm going to go out of here for now. That's what I want. Now I need to get Frida running on the phone. And we've done that in a previous project, and the previous project was here, instrumenting with Frida. So I'm going to have to do this also. So to get in here, first I'm going to have to have Frida tools. Now I think I've installed them on my machine here directly. I don't have to go into that virtual environment. Um, right, and I can do Frida dash dash version. And see, I have version 16 here, so I need to put version 16 on the phone. Now, I think I've already downloaded it. Um, uh, nope, let's go up here and see if I've got it. Uh, yes, I have Frida Server 16.0.0, which is close enough to the 16.2. So this is the file I need to put on the phone. So um, all I have to do is this stuff, ADB push. my Frida server onto slash data slash local slash temp. Move this over so you can see it. All right. All right. There it goes, pushing up to the phone. Now I go onto the phone, ADB shell, and super user, and go into that folder. ls minus l. There's only one file here and it's the Frida server. So I shmod plus mod plus x star. Now it'll be executable. It has the read write x permission. Now I can run it. There. And it's running now. Now the Frida server is running on the phone. That's what I want. Now in fact I'm not going to use it right away. So I'm just going to turn it off for now because we're going to have to reboot the phone in a minute and that would turn it off anyway. So I have Frida on the phone. That's what I need uh, for later. But now I need to put the app on the phone. Now my previous version of this project I had you just download the app from the App Store. And you could do that. The problem is sooner or later they'll update it and then it, may, it might not work the same. So I wanted to archive it. And that's what held me up for a week or two because to archive it, it's one of the modern files. Modern a files do not come in one APK. They come in several APKs and you have to load them all. And installing these is a little bit tricky, but I got it working. So here we are with an ARM processor. So you download this file. This is here is for the 64-bit Intel processor, and this is for the 64-bit ARM processor, and you have to have one of those phones to do this. I didn't save a version of Keeper for 32-bit. So I download this thing. I'm going to put it in downloads. I'll replace it. It doesn't matter. Okay. Good. There it comes. So it's there. Now I unzip it. Or actually, I don't need to unzip it. I'm going to move it where it is. So it's in the downloads folder. Okay, you just push that up to the phone. We're going to unzip it on the phone. So, it's ADB push. 
Oh, first, let me go to that folder. Let's get off the phone with exit, exit, and then go to my home and to downloads, and now do ls minus l um, key star. Okay, I have keeper, arm64 here.chip. Okay, so I'm going to push that in to the phone. I can just copy and paste this stuff here. All right, that's going to push it onto the phone. Then adb shell, super user, cd data, data local temp. Let's see what we got here. I've got Frida server and keeper. Okay, so I'm going to unzip keeper. Okay, and there it goes. So now I'm going to um, fail to extract something. Ooh, well, that's disturbing. Um, let's try L. Up here, I saw how big it was. It was 4039863. Let's see how big the copy on my existing system is. Um, here, looks like about the same. But I wonder if I got a bad download or something. Let me try downloading it again. Um, that's annoying. Um, there. All right, I'll let, I'm going to call this 64A. Ah, oh, it's a different, no, here it says 38.5 megabytes. It looks like it's the same. All right. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just the same. Well, uh, let's just try this. Let's try exit, exit, ADB push. Let's push the 64A up there. No space left on the device. Oh, my phone isn't big enough. How annoying. All right. Well, this could have happened to a student, so it's good to see it. So let's exit. Uh, okay, let's make the phone bigger. We figure out how to do that. I'm going to turn it off. And... Um, uh, not enough room on the device. Oh, there's not, no, I can do it. There's not enough room for Frida and these app components at the same time. I can probably just use them one at a time. I'm going to try that before I try to increase the space on the device. Um, if I take off Frida, I'll probably have enough room to put the app on, and then I can delete the app. That's my latest plan. Okay, so let's uh, see if I can do that. Let's go ADB shell. CD data local temp. I don't know why my phone is so small. It probably has to do with my decision of which phone to make. So I'm going to remove Frida server. And I'm going to remove um, RM minus RF that folder. Um, Okay. Okay. Good. Um, let's see if I have room now. Exit. Okay. Let's see if I... Oh, it's already up there. Oops. I don't need to push anything. I just need to do ADB shell, super user, CD data, local, temp. Up oh, temp, I meant. All right. Now, now I got nothing there except this keeper arm 64. Let's see if I can unzip it. Nope, it still can't unzip it. Probably, uh, okay, I'm going to have to see how to make my phone bigger. Uh, probably I'd have to do something to make the new freed up space available, like restart the phone or something. Let's see if anybody in the comments has anything uh, to say that may help. Uh, nope, just old stuff. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the phone, and I'm going to try to make a phone with more storage. Pixel 3XL, maybe that's the wrong choice, or maybe I can adjust it in the settings. Let's see. Um, here, Pixel 3 XL, uh, view details. Um, okay, here's the details. Um, yeah, I don't know, let's see, 3 XL. Looks like he used it before and it worked. Three XL API 30. Um, edit. There we go. Okay. And now I can go to advanced settings and let's see if I can figure out how to give it more space. RAM, VM heap, internal storage. Oh, let's just turn this up. 
just say 4096 megabytes there and I guess I'll make this bigger while I'm at it okay I'm just gonna give whoops I maybe 256 is the max that one won't let me change it okay fair enough all right that might do it let's see if that works finish and then restart the phone which was this one here all right that might do it I think I increased the storage All right, ADB shell, super user, CD, data, local, temp, LS minus L. Nothing there, I guess, okay. All right, let's exit and push up the thing. Maybe I'm not using the same phone I was using. Anyway, um, whatever it is, it's rooted. That's all that matters. So I'm going to push this thing up there. Okay, one file pushed. All right, a data, local, temp. Okay, there it is, so let's unzip. All right, now it didn't complain. Now I should be in business. Now, going back to my instructions, this is the part that took me a while to figure out, how to install an app that comes in several pieces. And I've got it here. Uh, there's the steps we need. So, uh, first, we're going to go into that folder Oh, first I have to do this here. Now I'm going to create an install create, and this number is, I think, the total number of bytes of everything added up. That's what all these numbers are. So this is going to create an install object with that many bytes. So it's created a session. Now I need to know this number. Now I need to modify these commands. So I need to put them in a text editor. Okay, there they are. Those are the commands I'm about to do, and the reason I have to modify them is that there's like an identity number for my session. If you created a session, that's my session number, and I have to replace this number with that session number in every command. So that's why a text editor is the easy way to do it. There. Now you install write each of the four pieces, and then you install commit. These are the commands that will install this kind of app that comes in many pieces. Uh, unable to open file. I got to move into the folder. All right. Now I should be able to create that one. Success. Good. Now this one. And all. So the first number is just the number of bytes in this file. And the second number is the session number, which the um, Android system creates for me when I begin this process. And it's giving me success for each of these. All right, and now I do the install commit, which will ins install all those components onto the phone. And that takes a little bit longer, and now it says success. So supposedly that app is now on the phone. Now I found before I can't use the app unless I um, do a cold reboot. So it uh, doesn't seem to be here in my instructions. Oh, uh, there, I refreshed. Yeah, cold boot is there. That's, that's what stopped me again in past. So after installing it, you seem to need to do a cold reboot before you can use the app for some reason. So that installation process is uh, not as nice as installing from the store. But anyway, it works. So now I restart the phone again. All right. And now I should be able to run that app. So let's see uh, where are the apps on this thing. Okay, there it is, Keeper. So I'm just going to drag it and put it on the desktop and launch it. And it works. Okay. So I'll allow. I don't care about that. Okay. Now I'm in. I can create an account. And let me just go back to my instructions. Um, I'm going to create an account and use a mailinator address and use a master password of this. Okay. So let me move my phone over to the right so I can see it without reading the instructions. Okay. So I'm going to do um, Sam Demo at mailinator.com. You could use a real address, but I wouldn't. I use one, I throw away address like this. So samdemo at mailinator.com next. And then I give it a master password, which is gonna be ccsf pound master pwbang 
like that. And they make this a specific thing because I'm going to look for this CCSF pound later to see if we can find the secrets. And then I go to the next tab should get me there. Uh, hmm. Ah, oh, there, I can drag it up. Okay, CCSF pound master PW bank. Okay, next. Now I've got to read my email, which will be here. And it was Sam Demo. And there we are. I have an email from Keeper. And it's got a code in here. Um, it should have a code in here. Uh, raw, JSON, HTML. There we go. There's the code EEX. So I had to put that code in here. EEX 2Y4. Okay. Okay, I'm in. Now, I'm just going to stick data in the vault. So I do let's do it. And then hit the plus sign to add my first record. And that's going to be a Facebook, just because it's easy to do. Facebook. And now, I'm going to use, again, CCSF pound in this stuff. Pound um, user and CCSF. Oh, uh, that's fine. Then tab, All right? CCSF pound password. And somehow that message is getting in the way, but anyway, that's what it is. CCSF pound password. Okay, and now I save it by clicking the check mark up there. So that stored data in the app. All right, now I'm ready to hack it with Frida. So I'm done with this app for the time being. Now I'm going to get my Frida server on the phone. So I have to go. Um, I have to move to a different directory where I saved it on this phone, on this system. Uh, Frida server is here. Frida server 16. So I can do adb push Frida server. Okay. Oops. Then I got to put it in slash data slash local slash temp. Okay, now I go on the phone with ADB shell and super user and CD to data local temp. And here I've got the keeper I don't need anymore. And here's the Frida server. I need to run it. So I need to show mode plus X Frida, Frida, and then run Frida. All right, now Frida server is running. Now I need another terminal. And to test it, I can do Frida PS minus capital U to show me the running processes on the phone, and it does. Good. So my Frida server is running, and my Frida client is running, so I can now instrument this phone, which is messing with the, uh, the function calls like a rootkit. Okay, so it's working. So now I need to get free dump, which I've already done with git clone here. And all you have to do is run free dump once you've got it. I think I've got it already in this folder. Let me do uh, uh, ls minus l, see where I have. Uh, hmm, okay, I got to go here is where I have it. 128, okay. Um, here's free dump right here. Okay, so I have it. So I should be able to run free dump. And this will give me the help message that shows you what it can do. And now uh, you need to find the name of the keeper process. It's going to need that. So I'm going to look. For, it doesn't always name Keeper, although now in the more modern versions of the app, it does seem to always just be named Keeper, which would make more sense. Before it had like Keeper Security or something. But you can see here it is. It's just Keeper. Okay. So now they're doing the name of the process. This is the command that will dump out the memory out of Keeper. Minus U will dump out the memory, and minus S will find the strings in the memory. So that's the command that dumps the memory off the phone the memory from the keeper process. So there it goes. Starting memory dump, and there it goes. Progress bar appears, um, and it's going to move until it is done dumping the memory, and then it's going to run strings to extract all the strings from it, which is nice. 
And then I can just look in the strings to see if we were able to steal uh, secret data. And of course, we are going to be able to steal secret data. This is the fundamental problem with all the password managers I've tested. They all just have all your passwords sitting in RAM in the clear. So any process that can read RAM can steal all your passwords uh, without knowledge of your master. They can also steal your master password, by the way, which is pretty rude. So after this, I could go into your vault on the cloud and keep stealing your passwords and further data you add to it. So it is a pretty serious problem. But as far as I can tell, this is the current state of the art for password managers, and nobody has found a better way to do it. Not a good thing. But I learned this from uh, a guest on Pulse Security Weekly that said pen testers just steal the data out of password managers all the time. And I said, they do? <laughs> That's not good. So to see if it has the data, you do grep CCSF pound in the strings, and you'll see and lots and lots of stuff here. And I'm pretty sure my master password is there too. My master password is CCSF pound master. Yep has a bunch of copies of the master password too. So that's really annoying. And that's what I wanted to show you. So it works. All right, and I'm gonna stop this recording.